Hey everyone, Cy Venom here. Today, let's talk about ACK, or AWS Controllers for Kubernetes. Now, ACK was designed to help you manage dependencies for your workloads running within Kubernetes. Now, specifically, these dependencies are services on AWS that you may want to take advantage of from within your cluster. As an example, let's say you have a container workload, you want to be able to store objects, and you want to use something like a managed service on AWS S3 to be able to do that. Well, using ACK, you can take advantage of the Kubernetes resource model, as well as the Kubernetes control loop and controller mechanism uh, to be able to manage the lifecycle of that service in AWS. Let's take a look at how that works, and I want to start with the Kubernetes control loop, as I think that's kind of crucial to understanding how ACK itself works. Now, the first part of the control loop is observe, and here's where Kubernetes is looking at the configuration that you've passed in. Next, it's going to do a diff. It's going to check if the, the configuration matches what's actually running uh, in the cluster. Now, finally, it's going to do an act. So it's going to reconcile that difference. And so I mentioned, you know, the control loop is traditionally used for things running within the cluster, you know, Kubernetes deployments, pods, services. Uh, but Kubernetes is open source and modular. And so developers have extended this API to be able to manage basically any type of resource. Um, and ACK specifically is going to enable you to manage services on AWS itself, so running outside of the cluster. Now, let's take a look at how ACK itself works by laying out two personas. I'm going to have a dev up here, let's say an ops or an ops team down here. Now the ops team wants to set up the cluster for the devs to use, and they know that the devs are going to need things like uh, S3 buckets, maybe access to Lambda functions, uh, and a number of other services uh, that ACK supports. Uh, I'll have a full link in the description below. So taking a look at that specifically, let's say that the ops team first wants to deploy a support for S3, so they will deploy the S3 ACK controller. Now, one thing that's important for me to kind of point out here is that there's not a single release of ACK, but rather multiple releases for the respective services themselves. So there's going to be one release, a set of releases for S3 uh, and for Lambda and, and so on and so forth. And so the ops team will need to deploy a controller for each service that the dev might want to deploy. Uh, so let's say they have S3 and we'll throw on a couple more here uh, for the devs to be able to deploy something. Uh, so how does the controller itself um, kind of authenticate with AWS? So let's draw that out real quick. Let's say over here we have services running on AWS. So for the Kubernetes cluster to be able to authenticate and create those services, it's going to use something called IRSA. This is IAM roles for service accounts. Essentially, it's uh, Kubernetes service accounts that are tied to IAM roles in AWS to allow you to authenticate Kubernetes um, uh, securely and, and allow it to create services on AWS. All right, so that's one half of the kind of puzzle here. Uh, so far, no services have actually been deployed because the dev needs to define some resource, some configuration. And so that's the next step here. And uh, for this, Phase right here, they're going to define a custom resource. Now, uh, if it's not a custom resource, they might be defining things like pods and deployments. But for this particular case, let's say that they want to deploy an S3 bucket. So they define that in this custom resource. It's something, some YAML file. Then in turn, they'll do something like a kubectl apply. Something important that I want to point out here is that this is done through RBAC. Uh, role-based access control. And ACK actually allows you to configure uh, the RBAC permissions of which you know, developers are going to be able to have permission to create those custom resources, because of course, in turn, those are going to uh, lead to creating the real services on AWS. And so they pass in uh, the kind of custom resource, goes to the control plane, that in turn stores it in etcd uh, data store, and now here's where the first part of that control loop kicks in. The control plane is going to notify the controller that the configuration exists. Kubernetes realizes that bucket doesn't exist in AWS, and it's going to act on it to reconcile that difference. And so just by pushing in that custom resource, 
that developer is able to have a bucket get created. They don't even need to have permissions to the AWS account itself. That's already been set up as part of the IRSA step. So you kind of have that layer of separation. Okay, so that's kind of how ACK specifically works. And by the way, um, this runs on any standard Kubernetes distribution, or it can run on EKS, Elastic Kubernetes Service. And there's a number of services that are supported by ACK. Again, I'll have a link in the description with a complete list. Now, why exactly would a developer want to take advantage uh, of this approach? Well, for one, obviously developers are also going to be doing things like deploying containers in their cluster. Now, developers are going to be following the Kubernetes resource model to do this. Of course, that might look something like this, where they have resources that are defining things like deployments and services and ingresses and whatever else they may need to run their workloads. Well, with ACK, you can have a single consolidated approach to managing not only your workloads running in Kubernetes, but also their dependencies. And so this means you, know, you can reduce that cognitive dissonance of having multiple different uh, infrastructure automation tools, maybe a different team that manages this set of dependencies versus this set of dependencies. You can kind of streamline that approach. Uh, in addition, you can take advantage of the Kubernetes control loop. The control loop essentially enables you to avoid issues with config drift, or at least mitigate some of them. Uh, and that's because it's always ensuring that the state of the, uh, the kind of cluster, as well as what's in AWS, matches the config that you've passed in. By the way, this uh, just uh, more easy to kind of attain a GitOps-based approach uh, when leveraging ACK. And finally, the last advantage I'll say is that ACK is declarative. And so you can uh, kind of define the desired state and allow the controller to take the necessary steps, whether that is creating a bucket, configuring it, or deleting it, or a number of other options. Uh, you can kind of ensure that uh, those steps are handled for you as you're really only responsible for defining the desired state and not the you know, imperative list of steps it takes uh, to do something like create a bucket or create a Lambda function or whatever uh, the service that you might need is. All right, now this was a quick video on ACK, AWS controllers for Kubernetes. If you found this video helpful and you wanna see more like this, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching.